Good afternoon everyone, Country Flyboy here, and today, another bit of the ADE tutorial. So let's bring up ADE real quick. Today we're actually going to finally compile the first version of our airport and see what it looks like in the simulator. So, first we're going to talk a bit of the folder file structure. I'm going to open up my, that not that folder, I'm going to open up my project folder. I'm also going to open up the default Flight Simulator X folder. I have them two open in the background. Now we're going to compile the airport. So we've gotten everything ready. Uh, we're ready to compile the first version and see how it looks in the simulator. This will be the first version. Think of it as an alpha build because everything's not going to look correct. Remember I've said throughout the series things will look a little different in ADE than they actually end up doing in FSX and that's when we compile the first version, we're going to check and make adjustments. That's what's actually happening. All right, so let's do that real quick. We will just go, come on, go to, uh, where's that? Compile Airport. Now, it's going to default to the add-on scenery folder in your FSX installation. I don't know why, because it's not going to let you compile there. You'll get an error pretty much every time you do. So what you want to click, you can either click More Options and go here. Um, you can click. What I'm going to do is actually click Open Folder, and just select the desktop. We're just. I just like to throw all the files on the desktop and then move them manually. That's how I like to do it. You can sync the compile file name with the project name if you want. That will change the file name, or you can give a custom file name here. More options. You got a few more. Uh, you can again compile to a specific folder. That's the same thing I did over here. You can also save an XML. Uh, file uh, because there's a few edits you can do that ADE doesn't let you do natively say like uh, can you add a jetway here yeah say if you had a jetway to a parking spot but uh, you wanted this jetway to be lower the, the default jetway is about 10 feet off the ground but let's say you want it to be only 5 feet off the ground you want a small jetway or you want it to be pitched up some you can't really change it here in ADE you can change the scale but that's about it what you can do however is compile the airport save it as an XML and then make the edits in the XML XML file manually and then compile it from the BGL compiler that way that's one way you can do a few edits there's a few special edits that ADE won't let you do that you can do that way uh, don't normally have a reason to do that though you can also compile separate airport and object BGL files and that will take every library object and put it in its own BGL file instead of integrating it with the airport BGL file. Don't normally use that option but that is useful if you're going to be that's useful if you're going to be placing objects separately in, in a, like with an object placer like instant scenery that's what that would be used for. Now let's see now we're just going to click compile Okay, now we used ground polys, uh, so it's going to ask us to essentially edit them. We've already edited them. Uh, it says it must be edited. I guess it wants us to confirm this stuff. Usually all I end up having to do is click through OK. You'll have to do that depending on how many uh, files you or GP objects you actually placed. Here um, is the compile parameters for the uh, GP objects. This will not appear if you didn't use any GP objects. Single ref point. ARP elevation or single ref point local elevation uh, that that can be changed if you want this will be setting the um, da, 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 da. the vertex is to the airport elevation for a GP object as opposed to this one to the local elevation or you can specify I don't know what any of that does I usually just use airport reference elevation select for DX10 I recommend you check that box that way they'll be compiled with DirectX 10. If, they, if they're compiled for DirectX 10, they will work in DirectX 9. Don't worry about that. But if you don't compile DirectX 10, they won't work in DirectX 10. And while that might be fine for you, some of us do actually use DirectX 10. And it is a pain in the butt to download scenery and find it not working correctly. Especially when it's payware scenery. That is a real big pain in the butt, Fly Tampa. But, uh... Yeah, so just go ahead and check that box because it'll work in DX9 even if that box is checked. So just go ahead, do your end users a favor. Now you can see I have compiled the airport. 
going to minimize ADE real quick. Now, again, I specified that I like to put everything on the desktop and then move the files manually. Note in my project folder where I save everything associated with this project, uh, I have a scenery and a texture folder. So what I'm going to do is I am going to cut, cut those files and put them in the scenery folder. Now I'm going to rename this texture folder. What those three files were were BGL files, which is the scenery format. Um, it'll name it ADE underscore TET by default. Well, an underscore your initials, whatever you tell them to be. Um, if it has a underscore CVX, that means it's the land class data, and underscore GP means it is the ground poly data. Now the ground polys will also come with a texture folder, which contains the textures needed. These need to be included with your scenery. So one thing you can do is if I just rename this, get rid of that S at the end and throw it in here, then combine those two folders. Yeah, just put them in there, just like that. Now we're going to go to the default flight simulator directory, add-on scenery directory. We're going to make a new folder, and I always like to use the ICAO for my folder name, KV. DI is the airport name. Now, if you're working on an airport over time, you've come back to a previous scenery you made and uh, remodeled it, you might want to put a V10 or something like that to designate a version. I don't. What I like to do is have an actual text document in there, just labeled version, and it will contain all the pertinent data. It will be included with the downloads, but uh, it, as far as end user, it's an unimportant file. This is just to verify for me because usually when I'm done with the scenery, I delete it from my hard drive, and if I ever go back and redo it or make updates to it, I'll just re-download it off of wherever I uploaded it. That usually works best for me. So anyway, we've made a new folder here. Now we're going to copy just the scenery and the texture folders. Copy them and we're going to paste them in this folder here. I want to talk in the VDI folder please. Alright, real quick I want to talk a little bit about the folder structure that FSX uses associated with scenery. Any add-on scenery you make should go in the add-on scenery folder in its own special folder. Now you may notice that by default there is a scenery and a texture folder in here. Usually, the way I organize it is AFCAD edits go in this folder, not standalone scenery. Standalone scenery that has its own objects and textures get their own designated folder in the add-on scenery. And just regular AFCAD edits don't. They go in here. Now, you may see payware developers actually put their own folder in the main directory with the scenery in it. That's because scenery doesn't have to go in the add-on scenery folder. It just needs to be in an active scenery folder. At no point should you ever really use the default scenery folder. See it labeled scenery? This one contains all of the default scenery for Flight Sim X. At no point should you ever need to paste anything in here. Uh, the way Flight Sim works, now I've seen this several times, people will say, yeah, I got to pull a file from here, or paste it in there so it works. No, you don't. All you need to do, everything associated with your scenery needs to go in the scenery folder for the scenery. That scenery is going to be made active later when we activate it in Flight Sim X. And scenery objects and textures and all, as long as they're in an active scenery folder somewhere, they will work. They will work. Uh, they don't have to even be in the same folder. See, like if I had a folder or objects associated with the Daytona Beach scenery, but I used the same objects in, in this uh, Vidalia scenery, I don't have to put those objects in here. I will, though, because I don't have no way of knowing if the end user, when I upload this, if someone downloads it, if they have the Daytona Beach scenery. But uh, I have no way of knowing that, so I usually include everything with my sceneries. But if you know for a fact the end user does have the same objects in another scenery you've given them, you don't have to include them in another one. You can put them all in one. That's a good way to save little hard drive space. 
Um, the only other exception to that rule I can think of is if your scenery includes effects, any custom effects that you put in your scenery, which is a, another animal altogether, they need to be in the, conf the effects folder and the associated texture as well goes in there. Other than that, yeah, you can basically just put everything in one folder. And I recommend you do because it's a pain in the butt when you download scenery and they're asking you to move files all over the place. It's just one big confusing thing. Also, you don't have to put just one airport in the folder as well. You can put multiple airports in a folder. I don't have any to, as an example on here. But uh, what, like, let's say I modeled every airport in the Savannah area. This is for a scenery I've been working on for Savannah International. <coughs> there's all the BGL files, there's all the texture files for it. Let's say I didn't do just Savannah. Uh, let's say I did Hilton Head Island Airport, which is nearby as well. I can actually put um, Hilton Head scenery files in here with Savannah and Hilton Head texture, fi texture files in here with Savannah, and they will work. You can have multiple airports in one folder. Okay, scenery developers out there, if you're doing a big area, don't have them install. The only reason you would need to have them install individual airport folders would be if you want them to customize the airport individually. If you um, help us out a bit, put it all in one folder and just name the files that are associated with a particular airport, we can make edits that way as well. Uh, it's, it's really not as hard as it sounds. <laughs> anyway, that's a bit on the folder and file structure. So we've got our folder in there. I'm going to start Flight Sim real quick. Hmm. So we got our folder in there. I'm going to start Flight Sim real quick, and we will uh, show you how to activate the scenery. All right, Flight Sim X is up and running. Again, this is on my editing computer, so it is not near as detailed as it really should be. <laughs> but um, it's way weaker than my main computer. All right, so... We're going to go to settings. Now, remember that we placed our scenery in the flight simulator slash add-on scenery folder. Right there it is. So remember that file location. We're going to go to the scenery library where you can see all the scenery I have. Um, again, editing computer, so only the sceneries I'm working on show up here. We're going to go to add area, add-on scenery, then select the folder that we did. Just select it and click OK. Now, if you're using Windows Vista or higher, it's going to do that. It's going to take you into it. Don't worry. It has selected the folder. Just click on the white somewhere in here. That's only for Windows Vista and higher. That's where it started doing that error. All right. So, scenery priority. Now, this is not the best way to show it because I only have um, the few airports that I'm working on on this computer. But basically... All defaults should be on the low priority. The first default is Edwards Air Force Base. This is a pretty much a blank installation of Flight Simulator right here. This is as it comes, so the default one is Edwards Air Force Base at the top. Any add-on scenery you install should be higher than the default. Now, any add-on scenery that controls land class data, so Ultimate Terrain X, Orbex Vector, it's priority should be below the airports still should be above default stuff but below any of the airports that you have then it should be airports then it should be uh what else? i think I, no air, no then it should be anything that affects global stuff like uh time zones there is a time zones um scenery thing you can download that corrects some errors in the time zones in fsx uh, so that should be top priority, really, because that is a global thing. Any nav aid updates should be above airports, stuff like that. This controls uh, things that would overwrite um, other stuff. See, like, if you have default stuff, default navigation data is in one of these folders here. But if you have this airport a higher priority than its folder here, then this is the one that's going to show up. All right, it, it's a bit confusing, but it's uh, necessary. So we're going to rebuild the scenery um, database. Give it a second. All right, it's done. We're going to go to our airport. 
Don't ask why I was in Korshavol. Georgia. Vidalia. Vidalia. However you pronounce it. I think it's pronounced. I think most people pronounce it Vidalia. 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 Um, air show. Vidalia onions. We're just going to spawn at the medium parking spot. Why not? Make sure it's during the day because we want to see how it looks at daylight first. All right. It's going to load up. All right, so we are now in Flight Simulator X. GSX is regenerating the airport cache. It does that whenever it's got a new AFCAD to work with. I'm going to zoom out. And as you can see, here we are at the airport. Everything, let's get a good look around, see how everything looks. All right, there's our fuel truck in the parking spot. Fuel station and tanks over there. Here's the FBO. Let's go to top down view, see how it looks here. As you can see, all of our roads are showing up that we placed. Doesn't appear to be any roads surrounding, however. Some of our land class isn't showing up. We'll have to look into that. Might have had the ordering wrong. All right, so what we want to do is go lock spot, put it behind the plane, just go into slew mode, climb a bit. I don't have a joystick on here, so I'm having to use the numpad to control this. And now we just want to go around and look at anything that needs to be fixed. So we'll start here in the FBO area. You can see, um, is this hangar? facing the right way it's hard to tell with this particular object uh, let's see no so this hanger needs to be flipped around and what we'll do is we will actually just bring you up ADE is a little slow when it's connected to FSX now note latest versions of F FSX or ADE will connect to FSX whenever it detects FSX is running so I'm actually going to in the background minimize FSX that way ADE will function a bit better and we'll just flip that around like that alright so we've made that correction uh, our parked cars look good our FBO needs to be flipped around because arrivals should be on the tarmac side so we will flip the FBO around just like that see parking lot looks good our beacon light is good this hangar needs to be turned 90 degrees looks like it's got a door on both sides so there's no need to worry about where the door is gonna show up so we'll just uh, flip that around and we'll move it right about there now um, everything else, everything else looks fine. Yep, there's a static plane. That hanger could move over a bit, so let's make that edit. Just like that. Our lines are showing up correctly. Yep, everything looks good. Alrighty turns into concrete there isn't it supposed to be yeah it's supposed to be concrete the whole way yeah see what I mean sometimes it doesn't draw things exactly the way you want them see here it's showing this will be entirely concrete except for this taxiway right here but as you can see it's drawn it is all asphalt except for these three one of the way we can correct that is if we put a node here to separate these two off turn this into concrete that way the asphalt won't start to here and that should note should correct that all right everything looks good here all right now I really wanted to show you this with the GP objects so we put a concrete GP object here and note how it pretty much overwrites everything on top of it or underneath it 
as you can see, the taxiway line just ends underneath it. It's still there, it's just that, that texture is overlaying it so you can't see it. And you can see the GP objects included with ADE look way better. But we still do have the issue of them not showing up. And you can see it even more clearly right here with these parking spots. And you can also see that difference I wanted to show you with the GP object texturing, how you have the um, default texture underneath it. And you want to have the default apron underneath it because this is just a texture. So if you don't have that apron underneath it, Flight Sim's going to think you're in the grass and it's going to draw the effects for you taxiing across the grass. It's going to the aircraft's going to handle like you're taxiing across the grass. Any add-ons are think you're going to taxiing across the grass. So you really want to have that apron underneath it. So we can get a bit more advanced with some of this stuff with the GP objects. Now I don't encourage you to use GP objects if you're new. Use the default stuff and use GP objects when you think. Why do we have this asphalt coming out right here? It's because we put a vehicle taxiway connecting right there. I'm going to actually delete that and I'm going to delete it by getting rid of that node and then just reconnecting it. Just like that. I'll double click to make sure that it still has the same properties. Left edge lights, center line, yes. Okay, so all that looks good. Note our parking tees are being drawn by GP objects just like we want them to be everything's good there so you can use the GP objects to draw things that FSX won't normally let you draw uh, I'll, I'll show you real quick if we um, say we want to add a helipad uh, over here somewhere there's three ways we can do that we can add a helipad by going to add helipad and we'll select a H asphalt you got four different selections H square which is H with a square border circle which is H with a circle border and medical which is H inside of a white cross we'll just select the uh, we'll select a regular eight actually let's select a square H its surface we want to be asphalt we want it to be 60 feet by 60 feet and transparent will make it transparent you want to click that if you're going to be overlaying it on an apron or a taxiway However, we're putting it out in the middle of the grass, so we don't want that. Close, we'll draw an X on it and close it down. Um, yeah, just like a runway. Voila, we just added a helipad. Now, this helipad does not have lights. If you wanted to put lights on this helipad, you have two options. You can place an individual library object. Uh, say the... Um, where's that scenery? Where is that library? Lights... Stew. Uh, we want edge green. You could place an individual light object there, like that. Um, this is a, a third party light lighting objects I have. Helipad lights, at least in the US, helipad edge lights are green now. They're supposed to be. You might still find a few old or uh, non FAA helipads that use orange lighting, which is the old color. Uh, the new color is green for the edge lights on helipads. You can also use the apron lighting tool, which will draw the apron lights. A quick note on apron lights um, the parameters you set here, any one of these chains, don't affect that, just that chain, they affect all chains on the airport. So this one will be affected. Um, if you just want the apron edge lights, for helipads, then you can make them green, change the brightness and separation. The other way you can place a helipad is say you want to have a helipad that's lit by default, is if you go to library object, airport objects, and there's helipads in here as well. So we have helipad cement, uh, and you can change the circle from either a white circle or a yellow circle. Uh, helipad H, helipad H yellow, which is these two are the same, just changes the color of the um, letter. Cement hospital, this is a helipad for a hospital. Cement triangle, which is just a H inside of a triangle. Cement X, which is uh, just an X on a concrete or on a cement platform. A few of these don't have thumbnails, uh, and a few a few of these don't have a concrete under thing. Like um, none of the large helipads do. Um, we'll put this here so you can see it in the next compile. Uh, this 
This doesn't have a um, an asphalt thing. This will appear as just regular yellow lines drawn on the uh, pavement. So if you want to give it an a um, put it on asphalt or whatever, you have to draw an apron underneath it. And there's one last way we can add helipads. By the way, all these helipads that you got out of the library objects, these are lit by default. This one's not. Now this is a default helipad. There are some add-ons that make use of this. They won't register this as a helipad unless you move this underneath it and make this transparent, basically. The other way we can add a helipad is with the GP object. So real quick, I'm just going to place a rectangle helper shape. These helper shapes are really useful, by the way. We're going to make it 50 feet by 50 feet. Put it right here. We're going to select it, right click, and make custom ground poly. And that's going to draw a poly in the form of that helper shape. We're going to make it, and let's make it dark asphalt. Freshly paved asphalt, essentially. Then we're going to resize this. Uh, let's make it 25 by 25. See how that looks? That looks fine. We'll select this and make custom ground poly. This time we are going to select one of the letters. We'll use the white. Then we're going to select an H. Now by default it selected this whole thing. How do we get it to show just the H and not all of this? But what we'll do is we'll select one of the vertexes, click this tool here to drag, and then we'll reposition that vertex where we want it and then each vertex around the letter we want. So to spell out whole words that don't appear here, you can uh, ju you have to do it individually. And that's why I said the GP objects are a bit tedious. So if I wanted to spell out GA parking, I would have to have an individual poly for G, an individual poly for A, and then I could have one poly for parking. It's a bit tedious, but it gets the job done. And now, if I get rid of this helper shape, and I'm going to make this slightly transparent. So now you can see it is drawing two polys there. It's going to have an asphalt, and then it's going to have a, um, a white H on top of it. Next compile, you'll see how that looks. Again, though, this will not draw light, so you'll have to put your own lights there. So I don't know what point I was making, but I just suddenly went into adding helipads. Let's look at the rest of the uh, scenery, see how it looks. So let's go up here to this runway. And in case you're wondering, yes, you can make your entire airport out of GP objects. We'll get into that later. And I've done it before, it looks really nice. We'll just check out this closed runway real quick. See our X's showing up just like they should. That center line shouldn't be there, but I put that there for a reference info in the editor and just didn't reset it. We'll reset that. So we'll make a note, remember to reset that before we compile the final version. Our X's are showing up. Here's our hold short line. Here is our Pappy Light objects. Neat, huh? They have to be individually placed, but they work. And you can fine tune them a bit because they're not going to line up perfectly by default, but you can fine tune them. Remember, though, that's going to be seen from over here. So, right about here is where that's going to be seen from. They still need to move over a bit, so we'll note that and we'll fix it later. We'll note everything being drawn here. All this looks good. It's not showing all of our land class correctly, so we'll have to look into why. But it seems to be drawing everything else appropriately. Let's look at our windsock that we placed and the tetrahedron. So remember I said that tetrahedron is a non-default object that you have to download separately. That's true, it is, uh, but that is a good tetrahedron there because one, it looks great. Two, it actually moves with the wind, unlike the default tetrahedron, which just sits there. Now here we have the default windsock. 
It actually moves with the wind. Everyone knows that. All right, so we've given our airport a once over and everything looks good. We've just noticed a few minor things that need to be corrected. All right, so that covers the initial compile and making corrections. I'm going to close Flight Sim now. And we're just going to talk a little bit. We're going to we're going to reset our GP stuff first of all. Because I want the ramp to be a GP object. One big old GP object. Just move that right there. They'll overlap a bit, that's fine because we want them to. Um, I need to select that. I'm going to copy this, paste it here. View, let's get rid of. Da, 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 da. Parking and taxiways, there we go. That's what we want to ditch. Set it here, down to the vertex. And I'll repeat that later. We'll just put that there. Make it yay long. Put it right in the middle. That way we'll have a parking tee. And we'll redo all of them. <clears throat> all right, so we'll just make the appropriate corrections we saw from the scenery. Uh, I noticed I need to pull this GP object down some, and by extension, this one as well. And that also means I need to reset my edge lights, just like that. There we go. All right, that will do it with this video. We've made we've made the compile version, we've talked folder structure, and we've made a few corrections. All right, so that will do it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it, and we will see you next time. Everything is awesome. Everything is cool when you're part of the team. Everything is awesome. I can't remember the rest. <laughs> Everything is awesome. Everything is working. There we go.